Welcome to Worship at Lakeview Lutheran Church. However you're accessing this video, we're grateful that you are a part of us. Um, and we invite you to share the video in any, uh, with other folks who might appreciate to worship at Lakeview as well. A couple of announcements continue. Um, we are grateful for everybody who continues to send in their offerings, um, the, the, the payments, the, the funding, um, the bills of the church uh, do not end despite a, a coronavirus. So thank you for supporting the mission and ministry of this congregation. Um, also, thank you. Uh, we have Thank you for your support of the Lakeview Food Pantry. We served 31 households last week. That's been kind of the average number. And thank you for your gifts for Porchlight. We sent a check for $260 to Porchlight last week, and we're very grateful that we were able to do that. So despite um, not being able to gather, the church continues. Um, as we said, we are an essential place, and the church never closed. And those are, are good examples. Don't forget an upcoming blood drive on June 16th from noon until 5. Um, immediately go to the Red Cross website or call Ch Laura in the church office to get a reservation for the blood drive. We'd, the Red Cross would greatly appreciate that. Remember, no one else is allowed to come in other than the person who is donating blood, so consider that in your plans. Um, and then finally, we are anticipating in-person worship on June 27th at 5 p.m. and June 28th at 9 and, and 10 a.m. Each service will be a half hour. We're limited to 50 people, and we will all enter through the glass door at the front of the sanctuary. And as I'm talking about this, Terry will pan the room so you have a little bit of an idea of how the setup will be so that we assure social distancing. You will soon receive a letter with rather rigid protocol, and we're going to follow some very rigid protocol as we begin, because we have a responsibility to keep everyone safe. So even if you feel you have no need to follow that protocol, we're going to ask you to follow it, um, as long as you're in this space, because of everybody who could possibly come to the space. And one of those items will be to be sure that everybody in the sanctuary during worship will be wearing a mask. So I encourage you right now to be sure that you have access to a mask. Um, and then as you come, you'll be able to sit in the chairs as they've been positioned. We ask that no chairs be moved around and you'll depart from the narthex of those doors. Uh, the lower level will not be open at all and no other doors will be unlocked other than the glass door to the sanctuary. So we look forward to seeing you live in worship, even though we won't know you because you'll have a mask on your face. But that will be fun to see how everybody's masks look. So now I'll invite us to silence everything and get, our, get comfortable um, in your living rooms as we uh, prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prelude.
Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. God is good and God's steadfast love endures forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Move us to serve you with gladness, God. Make our hearts be joyful as you send us forth to show care and compassion for all people. Keep us in your care and keep us safe as we go forth. In your name, O oh God, we pray. Amen. John Dyer will sing The Shepherd. lesson today comes from the ninth and tenth chapters of St. Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom 
and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Thoughts and prayers aren't enough. While Jesus encourages us in this gospel reading to go out and to preach and teach the good news of God's kingdom, he is also very clear in this reading that words are not enough. For Jesus, words must be accompanied by actions. Proclaim the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near, Jesus says, and do so by curing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, casting out demons, and having compassion for the people. The message about the coming of God's rule must be made believable through con a concrete demonstration of God's care. Those are the actions. We are called to do that. As I mentioned in announcements, the Lakeview Food Pantry serves around, and it's been pretty consistently, at 31 households and above every Monday evening, and it's been going very well. Now next week, as our guests drive through the parking lot to, to receive necessary food, what if our food pantry volunteers would skip the food and hand each driver a Bible? And then what if our volunteers said to them, Jesus is the bread of life, therefore you don't really need rice, cereal, and chicken from the pantry. How would the distraught mother who lost her job during this pandemic and is trying to feed her children, how would she react to that? Telling someone that Jesus loves them becomes much more credible, much more believable when actions accompany the words. Thoughts and prayers become real when actions are part of those thoughts and prayers. Bible studies and sermons are pointless if we don't make them real by doing something with those words after we've been nourished because of them. So the story from Matthew this morning is about Jesus sending out his first disciples, his followers, to do his ministry. We know them as the first 12 apostles or, or messengers, or as I've said, disciples. And we also know that disciples have been sent forth every day since that very beginning of, of Jesus' ministry. The people of the church, that includes you and I, we are Jesus' disciples. We are the apostles of today. We are sent into the world to live out this gospel reading. Years back, the church was very zealous about sending out missionaries. We've all funded missionaries. And we sent them out to remote places to preach and teach. Today, I think the church has become much better able to realize that actions need to be a part of our mission and ministry when we send those missionaries. And the church of today also realizes that compassionate action is how we remain faithful to Jesus. 
Today we realize that mission and ministry can often be com completed right here in our communities, in our own backyards. We don't even have to go to far away places to proclaim the gospel, although we're welcome to do that. The church, you and I, are called to communicate the living gospel through visible acts of compassion. And we do that right here in our backyards, and we do that across the globe. We have a very real situation going on in our country right now. Racism is the continued idea that some people are different, or more regularly, that some people are more superior to others because of their skin color. We've gotten rid of those separate black and white water fountains and restrooms. We, cannot, we now allow people from all skin colors to sit wherever they want to on the bus. But racism is still a serious injustice and a failure to exemplify God's love in this nation. Racism not only shows up within individuals, like it recently did in Minneapolis and Buffalo. Check out that video if you haven't. Remember that all police officers are not racists. But racism, besides being individualistic, also shows its ugly head in many institutions and in many systems throughout this nation. Today, racism is very prevalent in the justice system and in the disproportionate number of dark-skinned people arrested and held in jails in our communities. Racism shows up today in voters' rights. It shows up in employment and education and health care and in the financial world. I don't know if you know this, the Menominee Indian Reservation near our cottage is over 300,000 acres. There is not a bank or financial institution anywhere on that property. That speaks volumes to me. The institution of the church is also guilty. We've also been racist, and in some cases we still are. During the time of slavery in this nation, many centuries ago, the church was a leader in oppressing black-skinned people. The Bible was used as a tool, it was lifted up as a tool to defend the inhumane treatment of African slaves. That Bible that we claim is holy was used to prove that black people were not as intelligent as white people and that they were not able to live and think independently. That Bible was used to kept, keep slaves in their place. The Bible was also used earlier than that when European settlers came into this nation and then began to oppress people who were already living here. The church decided that indigenous people were barbarians and we took away their children and we put them in church-sponsored boarding schools. And then the church, through those boarding schools, tried to Europeanize those children. Those children who were severely beaten and punished if they tried to express their indigenous culture, beliefs, languages, or even want contact with their families. In more recent times, the church used the Bible to support the killing of millions of Jews during the Holocaust. And today, the church continues to use the Bible to repress women and to repress people who are LGBTQ. So I'm going to encourage us right now to use that Bible, that gospel lesson today, and understand that our verbal disapproval of racism is not enough. Jesus calls us to take action when people are oppressed and when people are the victims of injustice. We can take that immediate action right now through peaceful protesting. We can take action by voting and by writing letters and by making phone calls. We can take action today through the organizations that we support with our money and our resources. We can take action right now by verbally responding anytime that we hear somebody tell a racist joke. 
You can take action, I can too. By educating ourselves, by attending workshops, by keeping an open mind to learn, by reading books, and through the language that we use. We can take action when we participate in events that celebrate different cultures and different races, and when we get to know personally people who are not the same as we are. You get the idea. The list could continue. So go out today. Go out and proclaim that the gospel of God has come near. Celebrate and proclaim God's gracious love and forgiveness for everyone. Use your words if you have to. But if, you're, if you don't, your actions will be just fine. Jesus said so. Amen. The hymn and the words will appear on your screen is we are all one in mission. Together we profess our faith using the traditional words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, Give us the strength and the courage to make our actions match our words. Guide us to understand the importance of expressing your gospel through the things that we do and the ways that we treat other people. Today, give us the desire to stand up against racism and to respond. Help us also remember that people are also inappropriately oppressed over other things besides race. 
We pray that people would find employment in our struggling economy. We pray for household and family relationships that have become strained during this time of isolation. We continue to give thanks for all healthcare workers and community service workers. Give researchers the gifts to find a vaccine. As we enter the hurricane season, we pray for those who could be affected. Give us the knowledge to alter our living so that we can each reduce climate change, global warming, and damaging carbon emissions. Thank you, God, for so many gifts for the beauty of your creation and for the salvation through Jesus. Bring comfort to all who grieve and bring healing hope to those who are ill, including Lynn, Ellen, Georgia, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. We join together as we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. John Dyer will now sing His Eye is on the Sparrow. Oh, he 
Receive the blessing. May God who created you, the world and everything in it, and Jesus, the one sent by God to redeem you and give you the gift of, the, of salvation, and the Holy Spirit of God moving through you every day, grant you love, hope, peace, and joy. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The final hymn is rise up, O saints of God. The verses one through three will appear on your screen. Congregation Council has called a special voters meeting of the congregation. It will be held at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, June 28th. That's immediately after the 10 a.m. in-person worship service. You are invited to be a part of that congregation meeting. Um, 50 people can be here in the sanctuary, but you can also join the meeting through the Zoom process. And information and an invitation will be sent to you very soon about how to come to that meeting via Zoom. Our Constitution does allow for that, but it does not allow for absentee voting. The only piece of business that will be addressed at that meeting will be the approval of the installation of a new boiler system so that it's in and ready for October's heating season so that we have heat in this room and in East Hall. Um, so uh, plan to be a part of that important meeting. I would note that the HVAC task group has done a very diligent job of receiving four uh, um, uh, bids and, in, and a lot of information and have selected what I'd agree is the best option. And I also would note that it's about $50,000 project. You have raised already $39,000 that's being held in an account for that. So see you at the meeting. 